I think we can all relate though, having bad skin in high school. Like, I mean, some people are so lucky and they coast through high school without ever having a bad breakout. I had really, really bad skin as well. And it really does affect your confidence. Absolutely. Like I think now they, they talk a lot about obesity. Obesity, being obesity yeah, yeah. and everything, but they don't talk much about people who have acne. And acne is something, something you can't control as well. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. The obesity you can control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> acne you cannot. It's yeah. it comes down to genetics and it's exactly. it's hormonal. Exactly. It's not it's not dirty face or no, anything. No, 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 absolutely it's not. It's something hormon hormonal and you need to deal a lot. And if you don't find the correct solution faster, you are gonna have a really, really bad moment. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Yours and Ours, the podcast. Today, I have the absolute delight of interviewing no one other but Jorge Derek. Hi, 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 hi. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> I'm so now, excited to be in this podcast. Yes, we can't, we can't wait to get into this. But what we want to explain is that this is obviously kicking off the back end of my interview last week. Now we're going to get to know Jorge in a more intimate way so that we, as your hosts, have kind of spilled our guts and got everything out into the open um, so that we can then start kind of getting into it with our future guests which we hope you guys are going to make some suggestions about who you'd love to see on the show. Um, and also just so you guys kind of know who we are and, and trust us with um, giving you advice and, and making sure that we um, have opened up enough that you believe in us as well, because this is a real, a real show where we re- we're going to rely on each other and you guys to kind of help push the show along and progress with the guests and, and the topics we talk about. So we're going to get into it now. Yeah. Now. And- just to tell, <clears throat> to tell to everyone, uh, like you said, we are going to now film my, uh, the podcast, like uh, interviewing me. Mm-hmm. It's going to be two more podcasts, just you and me. Yep. Uh, and then we are going to travel to Australia for holidays. We're going to be there for one month. Mm-hmm. And there we are going to be intervie- interviewing. We are going to start to bring guests to, We've got to lots the podcast. Of guests. Yep. Yeah. And I'm so excited to start to bring the guests people. On. To, so, uh, stay tuned in our Instagram, George and the podcast, and also in the Instagram of Kiki, on also on my Instagram, mm-hmm. because we are going to ask to you guys who you want to bring us to, to, to bring to the podcast. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, we are going to ask you some questions, uh, some... Like some, um, yeah, so we're going to open up the questions box on our Instagram pages and ask you some things about like what kind of topics you want us to talk yeah. about. We're going to specialize. We're going to have a month, let's say, dedicated to entrepreneurs, people that have started their own businesses. We're going to have, um, you know, a month to discuss. Um, we might bring on a mental health professional. We're going to talk about, um, you know, tr- struggles that we've all had. Yeah, we'll yeah. bring in some guests that have had and overcome struggles of their own. And then we're going to bring in a professional to, dis- to discuss things as well. Um, I think it's really important to hear things from other people's perspective because we don't know how each of you are going to relate with a guest or with ourselves, but I definitely think that we have a lot in common and we're going to be able to to get delved into that when we get to Australia and get our guests on. Yeah, but not that, babe. We want you, because we are going to do a <laughs> podcast, like, for example, talking about Christmas and all this stuff, uh, and ask you guys, for example, uh, different situations, <laughs> or you live in... when in Yeah, so <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah. we've got a Christmas special coming up where we're going to talk about all things Christmas, like how to survive Christmas with your in-laws, um, you know, if, if you're going to be alone on Christmas, things that you can do to keep yourself busy and occupied, because Christmas isn't, isn't always a fun time of the year for everybody. And we understand that some people are alone on Christmas or, you know. Okay. What? Yeah, but not sad things. No, also not, fun sad, things. not <laughs> sad things, but talking about Christmas is an exciting time, but at the same time it is a hard time. And not a lot of people talk about that. We want to remove the stigma that Christmas is always meant to be fun and exciting and joyful. Like it's, yeah, it's a time where we spend with our families. Sometimes not all our families get along. Sometimes, you know. All right. Am I right or not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to get into this now with Jorge and I'm really excited to ask you some pretty intimate questions. Yeah, all right. Yes. I'm ready. Okay, so first off, tell us who you are right now at present. What um, are you doing? Who you are? What What's going on in your life? I mean, I'm Jorge, I'm 29 years old. I'm from Spain. And right now I'm just doing online coaching, like personal training, because... I was doing another job here in Ibiza, but I decided to quit that and just focus on our brand. Mm-hmm. It's just on the podcast, but not only this podcast, a lot of 
future um, goals we have you and me together, like a couple and entrepreneur. So yes, I'm doing the online coaching, mm-hmm. um, but not like having a lot of people. I because there's not something I really, really, really like to do because I really have a lot of respect to the fitness industry and mm-hmm. on the healthy lifestyle and everything. And I think. The 90, 90% of the clients you have when you're a personal trainer are not people who are really coming commitment with the mm-hmm. yeah. healthy lifestyle and everything. So people start things necessarily and they don't really com- yeah, apply themselves exactly. to it or commit themselves to it. And I really And that can be tedious. Yeah, as a and I really don't enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoy just training and work with people who really, really want to do a change, who really want to be inside uh, the fitness and changing their life in a really good way yeah. and not just... You don't want to have to police someone and like they exactly, have to take it into their exactly, own hands. Exactly, yeah. because, because like I said, they have a lot of respect to mm-hmm. the fitness and Absolutely. my life. And the thing is people that really apply themselves and dedicate themselves to doing it, it's you're just there as a conduit and a mentor, but you don't want to have to chase people to do the check-ins and make sure they're eating their diet. No, yeah. I... I, I, I I'm really, 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 when I start with someone in, a, in an online coaching, I'm really into that. I brought him almost every day. I'm, I really, really, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a really good personal trainer. Yeah. But if I feel like the other person is like. Pff, not giving it the full, yeah. uh, you know, the, the full and attention it yeah, deserves. I know a lot of personal trainers, they don't care because they are just for the money. But me, no. Mm-hmm. I really like to work with people who are like me. Yeah. Enthusiasts who really want to do a change, who really enjoy eating good, training hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also people that have to also realize that it's not a quick fix. They're not going to see results in two weeks and go, coach, you know, I've been on this diet for two weeks and training for two weeks. Why am I not seeing results? Some people expect things to happen instantaneously overnight and it doesn't work like that. And also people don't have education. No. I hate that. Again, like... I mean, I'm sure but back in the day when I think I first started training with my first personal trainer, I would say that I would do the sets and I would do this. Half the time I would be on my phone and I would leave. Like I know what it's like to want to change but also not have the dedication to do it. And I think that I, I hats off to you guys that are personal trainers because I would be pretty frustrated as well at times. So you guys are doing, you know, God's work when it comes to keeping people on yeah, the straight and we, narrow. I, I mean, I – when. I really, I study for me like this, mm. uh, but I realized with the past of the years, that's not I, it's something I really want to be do. So you've lost the passion behind it merely because, firstly, how, how many years did you have to study for, for personal training? Uh, it's, I did uh, almost five years. See, yeah, but wow. you don't study for a personal trainer in Spain. No. You need to do the, the sports uh, degree. So you go to the u- university and do your <laughs> yeah, degree. You, you can be a personal trainer doing just two years of a, of right. a small degree and you can do it. Yeah. But I, I studied sports science, mm-hmm. uh, but just with the goal to be a personal trainer in fitness, mm-hmm. not to be a teacher or yeah, all yeah, that stuff. I understand. But I, with the past of the years, I realized I don't like to be a personal trainer who have a lot of clients and just send trainings and workouts and yeah. pass. Like I, like I said, I have a lot of respect for, for fitness, for mm-hmm. the lifestyle to train dedication and that's diet behind and it. people really don't want to be like this so i prefer to just do that for myself yeah I study for myself and save yourself the stress. Myself, yeah and just for the small percent of the people who really want to be like me yeah not for the big uh, and in saying that though in how many what would the percentage of people you believe that would come to you over the years that you've been a personal trainer how many of those people that have come to you that you've taken on as clients have come in all guns blazing <coughs> super excited to become you know fit and healthy under your guide and they kind of just drop the ball and they don't dedicate themselves to it like how many people do you see coming through trying to to change their lives and they just don't have the dedication i think the 80 percent yeah 85 percent 90 percent i don't know uh, there's a lot of people who just came uh, thinking uh, to say oh because i have now a personal trainer i'm doing the correct thing but the yeah. thing is no you need to do what the personal trainer is saying to you absolutely you know? i think where people <laughs> get get it wrong as well is that they think that if they change their diet let's say 30 percent, but on the weekends they're still eating pizza and drinking beers and they're still yeah. having those lazy days where they don't go get their steps in they think that you know most of it's going to, like, if you do the majority of the things, but not all of it, it's going to make a big difference, but it doesn't. You have to fully commit yourself to it. 
Yeah, the thing is the people don't want to do something stable on the time. Like they want to do something really fast. And if, do, if they Quick don't fix. see the, the, fa- the fast results, they leave. Which is why we see such a surge in people having, I guess this is coming from a female perspective, but you see a surge of women getting liposuction and BBLs because they're too lazy to go to the gym and do the exercises that people are getting, you know, they're doing cosmetic surgery as opposed to putting in the effort and putting in the work. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, so as apart from doing that now in your like personal life now, tell us about your childhood and what it was like to grow up in Madrid. Yeah, like I said, I'm Spanish. Yeah. Uh, I born and raised in Madrid. Yes. <laughs> and my childhood was pretty normal. Uh, I born in uh, a hood in, in Madrid. A hood. A hood. A hood. Yeah. Like... So like an urban area, not necessarily an, area. an affluent yeah. area, a bit kind yeah. of, you know, mixed crowd of people. Yeah. yeah. Picalvaro was the name uh, because what, well, I mean. Was it dangerous? Not dangerous, but wasn't the good area. Neither. Right, N- Nowadays, yeah, I think changed a lot. Yeah. But when I was young, a mm-hmm. kid was different. Yeah. yeah. And so there's place, uh, some areas on that um, hood were not good. Right. So yes. as a ch- as children, you and your sister, like if you were work- walking, you'd uh, you'd avoid certain areas in that neighborhood. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and my parents, divo- my dad and mom divorced really really near. Mm-hmm. I was like five or six years old, and I remember they divorced mm-hmm. because they were fighting every single day. Right. So I was with my mom in my mom in this place called Bicabare with my dad in other place called Moratalat, which was also a hood. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a pretty shame of Fica Alvaro, mm-hmm. and, but it was really normal going to a public school, uh, being a good student, uh, not calling a, a lot of attention mm-hmm. until um, when I turned 13 years old. Um, my mom started to be really successful on her job and she decided to move to a really good area in Madrid. Mm-hmm. So that make also change uh, from one school to other school right. and really different. So you went from, again, like a hood kind of area where it was a public school, everyone's kind of just keeps to themselves, stays <coughs> out of trouble. And you've moved to a more of an affluent area, which is like, you know, a more wealthier area, exactly. more yeah. of a, a upscale school. Yeah. And how much did that change? Like how much did your life go from, you know, relatively simple, humble beginnings to a new school? The change was really big. Yeah. So because uh, in this first place I was living, uh, like I said, I was, an, I, I was a kid who didn't call much the attention. Mm-hmm. I just was living my life, playing video games, being mm-hmm. good on the class, uh, not having any problem, having a, a small group of friends. Mm-hmm. And like I said, also on the weekends, didn't did any social activity with my friends because my, my dad and my were divorced and on weekends was the moment to be with my dad. Mm-hmm. So I prefer to spend time with him mm-hmm. and playing video games at home. So yeah, everything was like this until I turned 13 and I moved to this place. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> my life changed completely because this place, the new school was a little bit like the United States school. Right. Where there's a lot of gossip, a lot of... Okay, yeah. so what we'd see on TV and things like that, like it's the popular boy and the popular girl and everyone's kind of spreading rumors about each other and... Exactly. And, yeah. Until that moment, I didn't realize nothing about myself. Mm-hmm like how I look or whatever. Yep. And I arrived there and in the, from the first day, me and my sister, we turned so popular. Yeah. And New kids on the block. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it was really, really stressful and really crazy. Yeah. I, I would say it was a really good moment. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, like me, I never expect uh, all that. Girls want to be with me. All that boy wanted so you to were destroy the me. Fresh piece of meat on at school on campus. Yeah, yeah. And I guess I feel like being that age though at that time, feeling like a little bit of a celebrity. Was totally like yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, I was College Agustiniano was the place. Was a re- I was like a private school, uh, really Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, if someone from the Ocean is watching this podcast, can can please send us a message this. and vouch for me because yeah, yeah. That, that year I arrived. <laughs> that year I arrived to the school I was t- 13 so 
all the schools around the area also they know a new guy were in there in that school. so it spread like wildfire this is even before we had mobile phones how'd they do it courier pigeon like new guy at school new guy at school yeah because at that moment watching yeah. whatsapp or anything we're, like we're, this we didn't have phones exchanging notes in yeah. class like yeah. like For, almost like a drug deal like a note in the they, hand we had the sms SMS. SMS, yeah. <laughs> An SMS. Yeah. Someone SMS that there was a hot new boy on campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching WhatsApp, watch watching any social media. I mean, wow. my, MySpace, I think, or Messenger we had. I had MySpace, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think I heard about it at my school and in Australia. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, was like this. and But also, I had a lot of problems with the guys from the school. They didn't like you because you were cute? Yeah. My uh, it was crazy. I remember when I started new high school. I started halfway through year seven, which is the first year of high school. And I was the hot new girl at school and I remember my sister had to drive me to school every day because the girls wanted to bash me Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the boys yeah. all liked me and they thought I was hot and I think my, my boyfriend was like 16 and I was almost 14 and I was yeah public enemy number one so I yeah. know that feeling yeah and fuck you by like the way if any of you are watching this girls <laughs> that's what ruined my childhood yeah fuck, fuck all <laughs> you that ruined, guys ruined fuck my childhood guys. with yeah. you bullying we could have been great friends right now <laughs> I'm with a very beautiful girl in our relationship so <laughs> But yeah. I mean, it's very stressful being in high school and coming in halfway through a semester or halfway through a year and everyone already has their cliques. So you start as a new student, all the girls like you, the boys want to, you know, kill you. Yeah, or- and this started to be really stressful on me because before arriving to that place, um, I was being really good at class. Uh, all my signatures were approved. All your grades. In a really yeah. good uh, notes or numbers, yeah. you call, you call you call it in English. So it would be your report cards. Yeah, like we, when they come in after that, you know, Jorge has been an amazing student this semester. Yeah. He's blah, 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 Very blah. Good. And then and, you go to this new school. Yeah. And they start to have fails. What were you doing? Talking to girls? No, just being in a stress situation. So, oh yeah. I start to live a little <laughs> bit in that. In that in he that, was talking to girls. In that, in that age, you are a little <laughs> bit. Oh. But yeah. at the end, I'm, I'm really happy we leave you also because, I mean, you are a little bit older than me, but we are not the same mm. uh, age. Um, I'm, I'm a lot older than him, guys. Let's just for the record. I, I'm seven re- years. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Cradle snatcher, as they'd like to call it. And you look like my cougar daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so um. Sorry. Yes. Continue. I'm really happy we grow on that moment of life. Yep. With no phones, no social medias, no Absolutely. Instagram. Absolutely. Because imagine nowadays. I think it should be terrible, right? Well, now that you say that, thinking about how many things, how many situations I've heard about in the news and things like that, about online bullying with students Imagine. and teenagers and, and some girls and some boys, you know, you know, being really badly depressed from that. I think that we really dodged a bullet when it comes to growing up without all that stuff. I think it's crazy. Talking on the landline, extending the extension cord of the phone and, and running it under my door and talking on the phone all night long was the only way you get to talk to your friends back then. There was yeah. no yeah. yeah instant messaging. So, and I think it's really healthy that that's yeah. how we were brought up. And behind that, I'm um, thinking you was stretch and everything, but it was really good. I, yeah. I remember that moment of my life, really happy. And it was like this until I turned 16, why I start to, I have a little bit of breakdown because like I said, my dad and my mom yeah. uh, were divorced and always had a really bad relation. Mm-hmm. And my dad bring to her, his, his life a new person. So he brought her, had a girlfriend. Yeah, you know yeah. her. Yeah. And my mom decided to destroy him, his life. I so it was a really big stress. Like, uh, there was a lot of um, tension in the family household. Absolutely. Yeah. Who make me fail a lot on the school, be really... Especially about, uh, at 16 years old as well. Like you're in that kind of age group where you don't yeah. talk about it with anyone and you hold you hold a lot of it in. So you become quite resentful. Yeah, I, I was... I, I start to be in a lot of troubles and a lot of problems, be a really bad person. Were you being naughty at school? Yeah, so... Disrupting class and all that kind of jazz. Until a point of... When I finished the year, I passed the the, the course, mm-hmm. but they say, I, I just needed one more year to have to go to university. Yeah. And they, the last so year- So you're in they, year 11 at this point. That's what yeah. we call it in Australia. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, they didn't let me do the last year to go to university in that school. They said to me, no, you don't continue here. So you got expelled is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That's bad. And I've never been expelled. School. I've been suspended, but never expelled. Yeah, <gasps> I was, I was. I always thought that I was the bad one in the relationship. I was the bad influence. And also that moment I started to have acne. Uh, just watch, I was that 
that year of my life mm -hmm. uh, from 16 to 17 years old, but was really bad. But also I found really faster the solution taking Rakuten. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we can all relate though, having bad skin in high school. Like, I mean, some people are so lucky and they coast through high school without ever having a bad breakout. Yeah. I had really, really bad skin as well. And it really does affect your confidence. Absolutely. like Especially think, being a, a, a popular kid as well. I think nowadays they talk a lot about uh, the obesh, ob obesity, being obesity yeah. Yeah. and everything. But they don't talk much about people who have acne. And acne is something, something you can't control as well. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. Something Sorry, you, the obesity you can control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> acne you cannot. It's yeah. it comes down to genetics and it's exactly, it's exactly. hormonal. It's not, it's not dirty face or no, anything. No, 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 absolutely it's not. It's something hormon, hormonal and you need to deal a lot. And if you don't find the correct solution faster, you are going to have a really, really bad moment. And also, let's not like forget as well, skincare and skin treatments and things like that are quite expensive. A lot of kids don't have the access to the finances to be able to access these kind of products and these kind of things. The thing is, I don't, uh, yeah, Rakuten is not really expensive. But I mean, hypothetically speaking, let's say in this current financial climate we're in, where everything is so expensive, a lot of families with three or four kids would not have the money aside to afford skincare when you're barely able to put food on the table. So it's like, Things like acne can really affect a child, affect a young adult. Yeah, totally. And especially if you can't treat it. To me, it was really bad. It yeah. affected me a lot. And my sister also had acne because yeah. it's a genetic thing. Absolutely. I um, come from my family. So we were having a really bad time. And I think nowadays they need to talk more about this also and give more solutions and teach more in the schools also. Like, because you're, if you're a teacher and you're, you can see that you, you have a group a of child, people with yeah. acne, yeah. why you don't, he to don't help them? Absolutely. Like, for me, it will be amazing if at that moment someone comes to me to say, hey, Jorge, you're having this? Look, Absolutely. you can find this and this. So my mom, because she had acne also when she was young, she said she to me, okay, yeah. we, you, we need to go to this and take the Rakutan. Mm -hmm. I took yeah. the Rakutan also, but it was like one year treatment. Mm -hmm. I worked faster, but it was one year taking that. Mm -hmm. So also was a little bit bad year for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So uh, you got expelled. You also were dealing with bad skin. Yeah, but I watched like that year of my of, of that life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, give me an insecurity because coming from that year, who was like, wow, Jorge, you went from being blah, blah, blah. the cool kid on the on yeah. the block, yeah, and then to being expelled because yeah. you obviously you were you were acting out because of what was going at home with your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the skin breakout as well, which also would have been yeah, a slog yeah, to the yeah, confidence. Absolutely, yeah. So what did you do like, when you had to leave school? Where did you go next? Find you find another school. Mm -hmm. Uh, to finish all the studies and go to was the degree. Was your sister at the time back at the old school, the private school? Did you guys separate schools at that point? My sister is still in the school. Yeah. I was fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's you still got there. booted out of. Yeah. So you went to a new school? Yeah, but in the new school, uh, happened the same when I was 13. So I. So you're are, hot again because you got the skin. No, clean. it was a, a new, guy. new guy. <laughs> I, I had. I, I was coming Big from a really- Big dick swinging on the, on the quad I was comes coming in from here. this situation I was trying, uh, telling to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing in my home is still the same, but I start to think like, all right, when I was 18, 19, I just need to leave my home and that's it. Yeah. This is not my, my business. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, the three minute of Rakuten was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I arrived to this new school and everything was perfect, but I found the gym. Okay. So this is what one of my questions actually. So when I know, I know most things there is to know about Jorge, but I do know that you were competing at one stage and you did win some awards, but I want to know is to what inspired you to get to that point? Because I mean, for a young person who has never really been into fitness and stuff like that yeah. to all of a sudden have this, you know, light bulb moment of inspiration and decide I'm going to start training really quite dedicated training yeah. and diet and start working on my physique and making it my hobby and passion. I mean, at that moment, there's no social media. Yeah. So nowadays you have, you, you can start your gym because you are following all these yeah. people in Instagram exactly. and you say, okay, I'm going to go to the gym and be like these people. There was no such thing as going to the gym when I was yeah. a teenager. Like we didn't do exactly. it. We just went to the beach. So and it's because with me and with my friend Alejandro, who you, you know, yep. we turned 17 and we start to go out at night in Madrid and going to places more than 18. So were you sneaking out? Did your parents yeah. know you were going clubbing or were you sneaking out? What is sneaking out? Like you, you'd say, oh, mom, I'm staying at Alejandro's. And he'd say, oh, mom, I'm staying at Jorge's. And you guys would be out on the town. No. Okay. I, I, that's, a, that's what uh, I used to I do. Never, I never, I, <laughs> like I said, I never had in my house, in my home. Rules. Really rules. I, yeah. So yeah, I told to my father, 
I'm going to go with Alejandro tonight. And we're because going they, out, going because to the club. honestly, be, let's be honest, because they, ha- they, they were living all that stressful situation. That's with the same thing that happened with my parents. No, yeah. They, I was given free range. They, they honestly, they didn't care yeah, about no. me. You know? I was given free range as well. So I can completely relate to you when you say that. Like I was going out clubbing at 16 and I had a fake girlfriend from school who was years above me, her ID, she said I was 19. Yeah. And I think when your parents go through something like that, I was the youngest. I mean, you're the oldest, but I was the youngest. They didn't care if I was, as long as no. I didn't turn up in a body bag the next day, I was like, go have fun. Totally. Yeah. Always well, like this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we start to go out to, at night having fun and everything, but I start to look to the other guys I'm thinking, wow. But they were older than you, these other guys, right? I mean, they were- 18, well, 19, I, more, 20. Like 20, 22, 23. And I think- Did you ever guys get, sorry to interrupt, did you guys ever get into any trouble or any fights or anything like that with people? No. I mean, because you guys, you don't drink, which has probably helped you a lot. Alejandro and me were always really healthy. We just were out to have fun, him and me. We, we just ha- listening to music yeah. and like like there's there's two type of per- pe- person the pe- the people who go out with on groups yeah and the people who go out with their best friend just one person yeah and Alejandra and me we had this kind of relation we yeah. were just going out having fun so what were you doing in the clubs talking to girls dancing yeah yeah I mean honestly yeah we were always <laughs> having a lot of girls and everything but yeah. we, we at the end we were we never been people who were wanted to be you weren't girl crazy like no. let's go out and pick up some chicks no never. I understand never but it was fun going out like I remember going out when I was underage too and even when I was of age going out meeting new people talking Me, chatting course, dancing did, but then coming back home and having fun with your friends yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after uh, a good day a yeah. good night also but like I said I was watching the guys who think oh I I really want to start to look bigger. Yeah. And because I guess it, we compare ourselves, even though we don't I, mean to. Because I always was really thin, mm-hmm. like really tall. Always, mm-hmm. I always was the most taller. For, not the most, but the tall yeah. well, from the, uh, um, a room or a class or yeah. the school, everything. The tallest, one of the taller guys. Mm-hmm. And but I say, oh, I'm really thin. I want to start to look bigger in clothes. Um. Yeah, put more kilos on my body. Yeah. So I start to go to the gym and like I said, I start to hear results really, really fast on myself. Mm. Like I was eating just the food I was eating at home and training really bad and training <laughs> really bad. I start to look really good. But for, for a person that's never really trained or done any kind of sports as well, like your body responded quickly because it's like, all of a sudden my muscles are being used no, doing because, something. Yeah, because people think I was doing a sport all my life and no. Did you I play never a did. sport when you were younger? No, like a uh, soccer just water or polo, water polo. That's right. Yeah. But not, mm, well, yes, really, yes, good in a team and something, but not like super focused. Yeah. You weren't like a, a fixated <laughs> on a sport yeah. and you trained every day for it. And, the gym, I start to do things like a really beginner, mm-hmm. no follow anything, any rule no or training program. Yeah. So, okay, I have a question. Walking into the gym for the first time as a 17 year old with no fucking idea what you're doing, walking in with confidence to do that. There's Hold some that. people that won't step foot into a gym now as adults because they're afraid of not knowing what they're doing. Like it's that's crazy. a pretty ballsy move. I have to say that's really... Pretty cool. Yeah, but nowadays you have a lot of information. It's crazy. You can find everything you need when on the I internet. Start, when I start to working out, like there's nothing. There's <laughs> You'd have to print things off at the local library and take it in there, with you. There was no internet yeah, on yeah, your there, phone. Like I and I never started also uh, going to the gym because the bodybuilding or anything. No, I, I didn't know what was bodybuilding. Yeah, like there's a lot of people who say, "Yeah, I started the gym because I saw Arnold, and Arnold was my inspiration." Yeah. I didn't care. I yeah. didn't know who was Arnold. Yeah, the guy from Terminator. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you just watched Terminator with me, Terminator, remember the other yeah, day? Exactly, yeah. Like, he was a big I'm inspiration sorry. to I a lot to of people. I to be honest. Like, I didn't show any bodybuilding or anything. I yeah. just wanted to start to look bigger, who good. Yeah, that feel it. confident in yourself and feel out a little bit. But I start to uh, train, like I said, uh, and he results really fast. So one day in the gym, the owner of the gym showed me mm. and said to me, listen, I see you training here for two months and you're doing everything really bad. <laughs> Tomorrow, <gasps> oh my God. if you really want to take the thing here, you're going to come here. Yeah. I'm going to put to you a routine that you're going to follow and you're going to eat mat, uh, as more food as you can 
from your home. That's yeah. it. Because uh, there's another thing people are doing right now. They've been young and doing diets. Yeah. No, 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 no. You need to eat. Yeah. Eat as more as you need. If your goal is to gain muscle, right, you need to, to eat in a surplus. Yeah. Because your metabolism so fast when you're that age as well, right? Exactly, exactly. You need to eat. I could eat anything yeah, back then. Your testosterone oh, eats here. Yeah. Really high, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, the next day, well, that day I was crying in my home, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you wanted to come back again to the gym, but yeah, I said, okay, let's try. But isn't so, it great that you overcame that in a voice that was like, oh, my feelings have been hurt, but no, I'm going to go back. I'm going to give it another shot. I was shot. really hurt. I yeah. cry. I say to my mom, look what she told me and everything, <laughs> but the next day I come back. And Aww. this guy uh, did to me for the first time a routine of the gym mm -hmm. to follow, um, not a diet, like, like, like I said, because he wanted me to eat as much as you can. As much as you yeah. can, yeah. I tell to my mom to cook more to me, more protein, mm -hmm. like chicken, eggs, but a lot. And I start to follow my routine. And from the 17 to 18, yeah. uh, I really, really um, grow a lot. Yeah. So uh, in, the, in the gym and all this stuff was really, really good. But in the studies were really, really bad. And that okay. year on that new school, I wasn't going to class sometimes. So what I were you failed. doing? I need to know. What were you doing? Going yeah. to the gym? <laughs> no, yeah, no, like <laughs> going, but not not paying attention. Yeah, okay. I, I, I go out all the weekends and everything. Okay. Uh, so so you, we I, pretty much had an identical <laughs> teenage life. Yeah. I'd go from the club on a Wednesday night to school on a Thursday morning, like yeah, yeah, a yeah. rat bag. So uh, I needed to repeat again the next year. Oh, so you got held you back. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. So were you the oldest person in class then the next year? One more year, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's, yeah. That's bad, man. That's bad, but that's so, it was worth it. But you For know what? Worth it. The thing is, I feel like sometimes as well, like going back and having to like look now. If you look back now, would you think to yourself like, why did I not just apply myself? Like I had enough time to go to the gym and the club and the school. Yeah. And you could have done things differently. For me, it was worth it. Yeah. Because I learned a lot of that year. Also, I... I Were you the creepy older I, guy? Like, hey, he's, that's how he's no, been held back. Just, just one year. <laughs> okay. And there's a lot of people also who repeat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I grew a lot as an adult because... Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to school, but I you started to have responsibility. friends uh, from the gym and everything. Yeah. And I learned from other uh, things of yeah. life. Yeah. So uh, I turned 18 and the owner from the gym said to me, listen, it's coming the Arnold Classic in Alto Madrid. It's an event here in Spain mm -hmm. uh, of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I need you to if you want to work there with me, just checking the names of the uh, competitors. Okay? Doing the registration. I say, okay. Yeah. But I, I didn't know what was. So you until, were just like, cool, this is, yeah, sh I'll, I'll come help. Until I arrive there and I discovered the bodybuilding. <laughs> and like, like and what said, was it like? What was your first, I want to know, like, what was your first initial reaction to seeing these super tanned, oiled up, massive juice head guys? I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I can imagine, I've been to fitness expos. I worked at a fitness expo with Ronnie Coleman yeah, when I, I was in my Korean, Korean yeah, Korean, yeah. I, when I was in my twenties, and it's like. They're gods. Like I'm a girl and I don't look up to that kind of thing, but there were people there losing their minds that there yeah. was Ronnie Coleman there yeah. and there was Flex Lewis or whoever this other guy is. And I yeah. mean, it's crazy. So I can understand. Yeah. And we come back again to the thing of well, this was 11 years ago. We didn't have the information we have nowadays. Yeah. I didn't know what was steroids. Yeah. I was thinking that people just were in protein and creatine. <laughs> You know, and BCAs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know? just training every day yeah, for yeah, five yeah. hours at the gym. Training a lot and yeah. eating a lot of protein. Right. So I you was You see there. those guys in like the cartoons, are they drinking the raw eggs? Like you think that's just how they got their muscles? Exactly. So or eating there. spinach like Popeye. <laughs> I'm thinking, I want to be like these people. Yeah. So I, 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 I remember eating all the protein bars of the, of the event, <laughs> thinking, eating all the why am I not? thinking like, I'm, I'm going to be so jacked. Like yeah. I'm going to be 
Incre so this, this, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. So the next day I come, I come back <laughs> to the gym. you just have a really bad stomach ache and <laughs> no, yeah, no, no muscles? <laughs> and to, to Rafa, uh, the guy, of the, uh, the owner of the gym is Rafael Ovejero. He's also the Spanish uh, president of, uh, select, uh, selector of the IFBB. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said to him, I want to compete one day. And he told me, no, no, forget that. Because he was a really uh, busy guy and yeah. he also supported me, but not like a coach. Yeah. So I say, oh, okay, pues I'm going to research by myself how to do a big, a good bulking mm -hmm. from, with 18 years old. And also I start to work in like a waiter <clears throat> in, a, in a gay club. Okay. Uh, PK2. Pecados in Spanish uh, was was a really good moment of my life. Uh, and this is in Madrid. It's in Madrid. Yeah. Have we been to this club? No, because I've been I've been to a club with you. No, Which one would we go to? One day we'll show to you. Okay. It's, in, it's in the in the street. Uh, there's uh, McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Gran Vía. Yep. Behind. Yep. I understand. Uh, I know where it is. <clears throat> Because we did go to a gay club together in Madrid and I almost yeah, passed out in the street. That was so much fun. That, that was so night. much fun. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, that was because uh, at that moment I have a, I had my friend Alvaro, who uh, is gay, and he wanted to go to um, a gay uh, party, and mm -hmm. I always was really open to do everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I really enjoy it, and also um, I start to check at that moment the gay people were the people who more take the care of their bodies. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I wanted to learn about bodybuilding and be more stronger. So I went to with him to that party, and the owner of the party that night told to me. Hey, uh, I have a, a, a party, uh, another party is uh, uh, PK2, and I have waiters mm -hmm. working shirtless. And on every Saturday, you want to work? And I say, of course, yes. Yeah. So at that moment, I was working at that night, and they pay really, really good for that moment, mm -hmm. and being 18. And I start to pay my supplements. I mean, it's better I, than working at McDonald's or something like that. Like you'd be making tips as well. I mean, a little look, hot thing like you. Would, the boys would have loved you. I was working uh, like <laughs> almost three years on that place. Yeah. It was so beautiful that moment of, yeah. of my life. Uh, we were, I met a lot of people. People were really, really good, really open, really fun, mm -hmm. really friendly. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, so I, with the money I was earning at that, that place, I can pay my bulking, mm -hmm. my supplements, uh, <laughs> my food. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was all for the bulking of the supplements. Yeah, and that also I was studying the again the the, the course for the fitness. Course, but yeah. I was doing good. Okay. Not the course of fitness. The no. last degree, uh, course. Oh, to, that's right. To so you were still okay. So you were high school still during yeah. your last year, repeated imagine, and working at a gay club. Yeah, imagine that oh. was crazy. That was that's crazy. That's actually fucking crazy. That, I was going to the school. It's like me saying, okay, this is equivalent. Ex look, this is my example. Me saying I had to repeat my schooling, or I was going to university, and it's like half the girls in America. They're all strippers while they're going to university because they make such good money in yeah. tips. Yeah, and you've got such a young, hot, supple body. Why the fuck? Not? Not absolutely. Was, was amazing. Milk that shit for all you can while you're young. And every every Monday I come back to the class and I had a, a new different story to to tell to everyone. <laughs> That's so was good. Really good. So you were the coolest guy at school again. Was, was, <laughs> no, but was, but in a different way. Yeah, it was really good, like more adult. Yeah. So uh, from eighteen to nineteen, I did my bulking and. Again, uh, with 19, Raf, uh, Rafa told to me, There's a, again, they are not classic. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to work like last year again? And I say, of course, yes. So I was working there. And the day I was working, one of the youths from the competition come to me to say, wow, you you look really good to to be young. Um, you don't you need to compete. And I say, no, I'm not ready to compete mm -hmm. in bodybuilding. And he told me, yeah, but you can compete in men's physique. And at that moment uh -huh. was the first year of the men's physique um, division, which right. is the guys who go with underwear. Shorts, yeah. And when they start, <clears throat> nowadays men's physique are really strong. Yeah. There's no like when they start. Yeah. Because well, I have a, had a friend that did the men's physique and I think he won in Perth and he was again, quite a lean body, very like muscular, really great shape, but not that super bulky jack. When they, when look. they start men's physique, they wanted like models yeah, with a little thing, bit yeah. more strong, yeah. but they were looking like surf vibe, surf first vibe, yeah, exactly. you know? Exactly. And especially because you had the board shorts on as well. Exactly. So I said, <clears throat> All right, I'm 19. I, I, there's other uh, competitions in Madrid in five months. I'm going to find a coach who is going to uh, uh, um, prepare to the competition, to the contest, mm -hmm. and let's see what happens. Yeah. So 
I find my my first coach, I, coach Alfonso, and he I said to him, okay, I want to compete, blah blah, blah. but I don't want to take steroids. And he told me, listen, you at the at at least you need to take a little bit. A little, and I say, and I don't want to inject something, maybe orals, mm -hmm. because at that moment I was thinking orals were nothing. And mm -hmm. nowadays we know orals are even worse than injections, okay? Right. But because it's something you take like this, mm -hmm. you forget. You don't it's feel danger. the severity yeah. of it because it's not a needle that's getting injected into your body. Yeah. So I, but it's still a drug <clears throat> that's being absorbed into your bloodstream nonetheless. It's, it's worse yeah. because you're going to your uh, liver right. straight, not to the blood. And but look, back then, in comparison to the like where you can purchase them now, were there more black market stuff that was being like kind of made and sold before? Like, you know what I mean? Like you buy it from some some dodgy guy. Yeah, now that we have a lot of information, you yeah. really can do your research and you can yeah. find good stuff. But that, at that moment, I don't know. Again, because like you'd have to do your research yourself, like you'd have to Google it, et cetera. But I feel like things are so readily available nowadays. But back then, was it like... You'd have to get it from a dodgy guy in a dark alley and yeah, like, yeah, totally, totally. that scares it's the crazy. fuck out of me. Yeah. So I was doing uh, my, uh, all my preparation naturally until four weeks before the contest and mm -hmm. I started to take Anabar for the first time. So I was taking that uh, 30 milligrams, it's like three pills per day. And I was thinking by myself, uh, at that moment, my best friend, uh, Angel, he was telling to me like, I don't know, you can be first or you can be the last one because, okay, you look good. You look like men physique, but you are not going to be the strongest. Yeah. No. And I say, let's but see. The thing is, again, when you said the strongest, it's not an actual physical <laughs> strength combination. It's how you look. Yeah. The thing is, the biggest guy on the stage could be the fucking weakest yeah, guy on the stage. That moment was in junior. Okay. I was 19 and I, w I will be competing with people with 26, So like you're an open, open age group. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I say, okay, let's see what happened. So... I was I was watching a few videos on YouTube how how to do the poses and everything. So you didn't even have a posing coach because you no. see these people nowadays that have been training with their posing coach for twelve weeks out. Crazy! I didn't have nothing. Oh my fucking god! Nothing. This is crazy. I was the second year of men's physique. So imagine. So <laughs> I went to two, com so two, cute, to, the to two competitions. The first one from fifty, I turned second. So when I turned second, fifty people that yeah. have, have they competed in before in something yeah. like. So, I said, oh my God, maybe this is, the, maybe I'm good. <laughs> so my coach said, okay, in two weeks, there's another one. Yeah. Let's go. <clears throat> let's, let's make the body a little bit more harder and let's see. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks, my body turned a little bit more dry and I won the competition. Mm -hmm. So it was really good because the person who gave me the medal to the, be the winner was Rafael Ovejero, the guy who were the owner of the gym, who is the Spanish director. So the IABB. person that took you to your first like bodybuilding thing that kind of give you that inspiration yeah. was the person that was able to give you the yeah, award. Yeah, he, he was the person who That's gave really the nice. award to the first time. So, so it came full circle. Yeah, like it, it, it would have been an accomplishment for him to see you, you know, this person he's taken under his wing and showed him how to train at the gym and all that stuff. That, that was crazy. That was crazy. And I remember needing to leave really fast the competition because like I said, I was the youngest always and I wasn't really, wasn't really, really strong. I was like the main physique body. Yeah. But in a bodybuilding contest, it was really difficult to understand why this guy is winning. Yeah. So everyone, every people from, from the, from, the crowd. The crowd were like, wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, me and so my it's like a running. soccer riot, so to speak, almost. Like, I what the hell? And I remember being crying, really happy. Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah, it was really good. So, uh, how then, many people were in the crowd? I have to know. Like wow, thousands? Like, thousands? Like, no, thousands. No, but hundreds. Oh, hundreds, okay. hundreds. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so, the next week, uh, my Alej uh, Alejandro uh, Rafael Ovejero told me, listen, uh, next year you need to try to be the to the pre uh, selection of Spain to represent Spain for the European Championship. Mm -hmm. You need to go to the pre selection first, and if I ca if they choose you, you go. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, but until next year, I didn't have any goal. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, I realized the mental breakdown mm. of not having any goal, mm -hmm. being really, really focused in, in something, yeah. in a, in a contest and everything. And I start to eat different, have the, put all the weight mm -hmm. of the water retention. Didn't yeah. know what was happening. Didn't know. I was, I was 20 at that moment. Yeah. 
and I had I started to have a really bad relation with food mm -hmm. because. Um, I didn't want it to eat bad, but my body was asking at every single yeah. time, sugar, sugar. It, <clears throat> I feel like I see this a lot and I see it with some of the girls that I know from Australia that have done comp competitions <coughs> and they've dieted for like 16, 20 weeks and they've done all that stuff. And then after they've done the competition, you see them, they, it's crazy. they literally bounce back so like from one extreme to another and yeah. they whack on like they look like they've gained 10 kilos in two, three weeks because they're, it's, they're craving food and they can't control themselves. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult to control that impulse. Yeah. And also, I, I, like I said, I was taking just an hour, mm -hmm. but when you are taking something, mm -hmm. it can be minimal, but when you have a great genetic mm -hmm. and you're everything really, you're doing everything really, really good, mm -hmm. and the moment you cut that thing, your body's going to change again. Yeah, yeah. it's going to change. Yeah. It's going to change it's and something. The, and, the, and the shelf, like the, the lifespan of, of an anavar, like it's in and out of your system in like 24 hours. So the second it's that really you fast. stop taking it. It's really fast, yeah. the anavar, exactly. And for me being 20, didn't understand what was happening. Also starting to look worst. Don't yeah. be, boy, I was looking. Feeling like the top of the, the, the very, very pinnacle of the your being form. Being on my prime. Yeah, and then, yeah. Yeah, I, I was, yeah. I, I came to a little depression who I didn't understand at that moment what was happening to myself. Mm -hmm. And also because <clears throat> at that moment watching that information we have nowadays on the internet, yeah. I, I couldn't talk with anyone. No. You know, now they And the thing is as well, <coughs> we, you obviously probably didn't tell many people that you were taking out of our either and no. you couldn't talk to your family about now it because obviously... Now they, everyone is saying everything. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm in TRT, I'm in blah, blah. At that moment, everyone was trying about. to look natural, yeah. which is really bad, but yeah. I mean... The war was like this at that mm -hmm. moment. I was thinking that Mr. Olympia just was taking mm, protein powder. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, of course. And yeah, uh, I had that breakdown, but I start to come back again. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized it was a short period of time, and then your your yeah. brain start to change. Absolutely, you need just time to come back. And like I said, that year I prepared myself um, training like uh, for the next year. Um, I finished my studies, like I said, and but I didn't start the degree of uh, sports until I was 21, 20, finish of my 20s. Mm -hmm. So that, that summer was really good. I was training, I was working the nightlife. So uh, you're still working in the clubs? Yeah, but I leave my, my work like a waiter mm -hmm. and I start to be Coco Dancer. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> yeah, because the... The owners of the party. You got a promotion. They show me and show this guy now looks really good to dance. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, at that moment, uh, now nowadays it's not a thing to be a dancer in nightclub. But back on the days, I feel like it's still a thing. No, babe. I mean, we don't actually even have go-go dancers really in Australia at all. Yeah, but in Spain was a thing. Okay. Was it? I mean, I've lived in LA and stuff like that where they've got go-go dancers. And I mean, even being here, being in Ibiza, like every club that you go to, they've got their performers. But you don't see a lot of <coughs> like a lot of guys on the stages of straight clubs. But yeah. obviously gay clubs, yeah, you're not going to have a girl on the stage there. Yeah, but uh, uh, still in, in the gay life I, night, I think it's not a thing anymore. Mm. Uh, there's a, uh, people dancing, but... Back on the days was something. Like and to be you, a go-go dancer was and, a big deal. Yeah, and you could earn a lot of money. Right. So I turned 20 and I started to dance in a really good parties, gay parties, but also uh, mixed parties like matinee. I don't know if you had matinee guys, but it was really famous here in Spain. No. And, yeah. So, I have a question. Sorry to interrupt you. During all this time when you were so young dancing in these clubs and things like that, did you ever feel ever like you were you know, being exploited? No. Or did you ever feel unsafe at any time with anyone trying to like to make sexual advances at you or anything like that? Like no. people grabbing you inappropriately or trying to yeah. offer you sex I mean, and I, things like that? I think everyone who was working in the nightlife, um, you are dealing with drunk people. Yeah, because I know? used to work as a barmaid. Like I used to yeah. work make serving cocktails and things like that. And even being a girl, being out in a nightclub, you're still walking the gauntlet. Like I used to do the modeling competitions on the stages at, <laughs> at nightclubs. Yeah. And again, I'm just asking because <laughs> I know as a woman how forceful – a drunk straight man can be. It's so I can only yeah. imagine how forceful a drunk gay man could be when they see a really sexy young guy and they they know that you're straight. They probably be like, oh, I'm gonna change him. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna make him change. You know what? I need to say always in the gay atmosphere, everyone was 
really good. I yeah. have mm, still having really, really good friends from there. Of course, in every place you are going to find stupid people. Yeah. But that you're going to find everywhere. But for the most part, it's generally like, again, in Australian gay clubs as well, a lot of my straight Australian friends, the guys go like to hang out at the gay clubs because there's no exactly. aggression, there's no testosterone, there's no competition. They can actually go and have fun. And like for the most part, everyone's very open-minded, but I do know that there would be people that don't necessarily have that open-mindedness that would think, oh, if I go into a gay club, all these gay guys are yeah. going to try and attack me. But mm. it's not like that, is it? Totally. Like I said, I was always really open mind with everything. And I really find really fast uh, the straight night is really bad in compared with the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one, I mean, we love going to gay clubs. We love our gay clubs, don't you we? You and me, we had the best party yeah. in the gay club with my friend Justin. Hi, Justin. Yeah. Hi, Justin. <laughs> uh, but I think the mentality is very much different because gay, like in a gay club, people go out to have fun and dance. Exactly. They in a straight club, fun. people go out to pick up chicks or pick up girls, go yeah, out to pick up guys. Yeah, and drunk. Yeah. Drunk and aggressive. Exactly. I think so. I think yeah. there's definitely a, um, a hookup culture in both aspects, but I think everyone in a gay clubs out to have fun if they hook up it's ah oh, it's bonus but if you go to a straight club people are literally going out hunting for girls totally yeah so i mean i feel proud because i wasn't like this to go out to pick hand girls or anything yeah. <laughs> <Girls>. <laughs> so, and you don't drink alcohol or anything I, like that really alcohol, you're a really healthy yeah. person yeah so yeah i was doing my bulky like i said for a uh, while i was working in the nightlife and in my money really good i start my degree on a science a sports science so the moment of prepared to my pre-selection uh, of uh, the European Championship were really close and I was doing everything natural until four weeks. Uh, no, to the pre-selection, I arrived natural, not oh, okay. taking any stuff. Yeah. And they picked me up uh, to go to the European Championship. Wow. Uh, but was in junior, okay? At that moment, was it like So before? they gave you an age, like there was age groups yeah, then? Yeah, in the, in the junior. Uh, yeah. I was uh, 20 to 21, and you can be junior until 23. Okay. So um, when I, I was choose, uh, my coach say, okay, let's do again the Anabar mm -hmm. until the uh, European Championship who... I was out four weeks out or something like this. Mm -hmm. So I uh, achieved a really good body because the, I did a really good natural bulking before and I earned muscle because when you are 20, 21, 19, you can grow a lot really yeah. fast and natural. Right. But what, what happened? I arrived to the European Championship and yes, I was looking good. They never do the, uh, their work, but the thing changed. And in, in, I found... All these people were different. So really the level strong, of the level the of competition level. was yeah yeah. <clears throat> so I turned, again they probably weren't natural and they probably no. were on steroids for a really long time. Yeah, and also taking into consideration you're working as a go-go dancer, you're probably doing a lot of cardio as well. No, so. I, yeah, <laughs> but I was eating too a lot. Yeah, you know? yeah, but yeah, I turned six. And so you, you were you were ranked sixth yeah. in the group. Okay, yeah. so you didn't qualify for anything. Yeah, to the final. You got to the final. Yeah, yeah okay. the, the final that, is final six mm -hmm. always, and I turned six. Okay, so I was pretty good, but I realized, all right, uh, I have I can have a really really good future in men's physique because when I finished the competition, I went to the big youth the mm -hmm. who used the competition, and the the main youth told to me, listen. You are really good. You can win everything, but you need to put a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. You look like a model, and this is a bodybuilding competition. Mm -hmm. So right. I said to myself, all right, or leave this. I have fun. And mm -hmm. I, mm, like I said, I tried the Anabar, but I don't want to do a big jump on anything and right. continue my life on training and everything and fitness, but not nothing else or do the big jam start to take stuff and everything because at that moment watching like nowadays you can compete natural and be uh, there's a body bit natural body bit everything but at that moment just watch AFBB of course can I ask a question <clears throat> though if you were to have committed yourself to doing the men's physique and taken that jump what do you really get out of it like is it big prize money is there something like no. so really you would have been taking a big jump and putting your health at risk by taking steroids and things you don't want to do just for a trophy to say I'm the best 
I mean, you can be professional. But what does the pro, what does a pro card get you as well? Does it get you a big prize money? Nothing, or is it, no. Again, so it's, um, what I'm understanding is is that people put their their health and their body and their injuries and all that kind of stuff on the yeah. line just to say. I won this award. I have destroyed my liver full of steroids <laughs> <laughs> to hold a trophy. And you know what I mean? May never ever get an erection again. Yeah. I mean, because I've absolutely you, blasted. You, you can monetize that in social media nowadays. Of course. But, but we didn't moment, have that back then. Yeah. There yeah, wasn't you, like that. You had Instagram. I had people follow me on Instagram of with course, that. Of course. But it wasn't like it is now. At that moment, yes, where Sergi Constance, Steve Cook, Jeff Shade, it was like the first influential right. of fitness. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Because you know? I remember back getting Exactly. Like the way that Instagram has become an advertising platform and biz and businesses no longer have ad campaigns with celebrities. They just pay the best influencer, you know, $10,000 or something like that. You can yeah. make a lot of money from it, but at the same time, that wasn't around that much that back then. Like nowadays, yeah. Yeah, so nowadays, yeah. Really, you were you were going to dedicate your life, or hypothetically, yeah. or all these other people dedicating their lives to training. You know, spending time away from loved ones, girlfriends, schooling, failing school yeah, to that, to, that, 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 to chase a yeah. trophy. Yeah, but that, that is bad too because nowadays, because uh, ev everything is so public. Like you have all these fitness influencers who are on steroids and. It's, it's public, like they are saying, listen, they I'm on this and this and this. Yeah. Are making all these young people to take a story because they want to be like this. Yeah. And they, I, and like that what that one person you are watching with 21, 22 years old who is really famous taking steroids, that's one for one for millions. Yeah. And you are having a new group of small kids yeah. taking stories from the beginning mm -hmm. who are destroying their, their testosterone, Absolutely. their tot totally their growth. So that is where the the dangerous line between social media and influencers is, is the reason is that you have such a huge platform, a global platform, and you can literally influence anyone to do anything if you have enough followers. And a lot of people don't take that into consideration that they're responsible for so many young people totally. looking up to them. No, I mean, they are not responsible because at the end it's not their business. No, but at the same time, if you have a conscience and you think to yourself, everything I put out onto social media or onto the internet has, it's like a drop in the pebble in the ocean. Yeah. That effect can affect something else. So you need to obviously, <clears throat> if you're a person with a conscience, and, and you think about that, you have forethought about it. You think to yourself, I don't necessarily want to broadcast this if in case it gets into the wrong hands or the wrong ears, so I to think, speak. I, I think nowadays we are living a moment of, of the life. There's a lot of people taking steroids. Absolutely. And it's because sometimes I think things being taboo are better than being on the public being eye of everyone. Accepted about you know? it, yeah. Because are making things really easy like i remember when i was thinking the olympias just were taking protein mm -hmm. and maybe that's the correct thing to know mm -hmm. because if we know the more truth <laughs> is out there the more dangerous the truth can be because the more people know about it the more people talk about it the more people can be influenced I think by so. that so i don't know now i don't know what i prefer honestly yeah. Nowadays, I, I don't know what to choose. If you were so, so scared about it back then and it stopped you from taking it, it did its, the, the, the bad reputation did its job because it deterred a young person away from making that decision. Now that it's so easily talked about and people can research about it enough, they go, oh, it's not that scary after all. I'm going to do it. And now it's, it's more accessible for people to, to, to reason with doing something yeah. than it is to be scared and never do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember I took in the decision to not doing it because. I I always thought uh, bodybuilding was good, competing was good, but I I don't know how to explain. But I want to do other things. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and I didn't want to to focus my life in one direction mm -hmm. and maybe destroy another opportunities I will have in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I sometimes I regret when I was more young when I uh, with twenty one, twenty two. Sometimes I was thinking, oh, maybe I needed to choose the other side. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I I'm think all things sure happen I'm, for a reason. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm really happy. But yeah, so I stopped uh, to compete and I leave a little bit the bodybuilding situation because one year after that, uh, I I lose my best friend at that moment. <clears throat> uh, because uh, all this uh, building, building, building stuff and the situations, I start to do it with one person. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I decide to quit of the competition, he say no, he choose the other side and yeah, taking stuff and trying to be a really, really good bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. 
but um, we were really close. But at that moment, he also started a relationship with an, a girlfriend, and we didn't have we wasn't that close than before. So you kind of grew apart because he remained very much focused on bodybuilding and he also got into a relationship. Yeah, so we, we, your interest we, we, kind we, of we, yeah, we still yeah, having, hit a fork in the road. Yeah, we still having a relation, but not like before mm -hmm. uh, because we were training almost every day together, talk, uh, sleeping in the house of each other. Mm -hmm. And one day um, in, 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 2000, in 2016, uh, my old coach who prepared me to all this contest called me because he's the, this coach was still in being the coach of this guy. Mm -hmm. And he called me and asked me, eh, Jorge, are you okay? I say, yeah, I'm good. Uh, do you know what happened? And I said, no. I say, this guy is dead. Is that how he said it to you though? That like those are the exact words? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that would be really confronting. To hear this. I think you and me, we talk about this sometimes. Yeah. Like when he told me that, I, I react really cold and like didn't realize what this guy was telling to mm -hmm. me. So he told to me in the morgue he was. Mm -hmm. So I declined him. I called my friend Alejandro and told him, listen, this guy is dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You need to come with me to the morgue and check what what was happening. I don't understand that, but like I said, I was really cold. I didn't realize nothing before going. You're probably in a little bit of shock, yeah. and it hasn't really you haven't really accepted it Be, or yeah before, processed it yet. Be, before going to that place, I met with Alejandro. We were going to take a coffee, chilling, relax, normal, mm -hmm. okay. Until that moment, I arrived to the, this place, and the mom of my friend showed me, and he hugged me. And apologize to me because <laughs> this person uh, um, started to work with me also in the night life, and the mom wasn't really happy at that moment because <laughs> that her son was working yeah, in a gay club. He, he, he was he was thinking I I was a, a bad influence for his son, but at the end, no. At, at that moment, you know, moms are a little bit concerned always about the the their sons, mm -hmm. and yeah, so. I went inside the room and I saw him and I was shocked. I had like a blackout. Mm. I felt like my... You would have gone into shock is what, yeah, you would have literally gone into shock. I had a blackout. I I, I felt, I remember feeling like the my world, the planet was going Closing down. Closing in on you, yeah. Like, pff, I don't know how to explain. Yeah. And I sit down and start to cry a lot. They bring me water. The man was telling to me, yeah, we, he, Jorge, he was a really big, a good friend of him. Uh, they had a really good relation. They start to do the gym together, blah, blah, really sad. So at that moment, I think one, that was one of the most important moments of my life. Mm -hmm. I realized what, what are the important things of life and trying to enjoy it mm -hmm. and not I don't know. So just for the record as well, um, this friend of yours, they, he, he took his own life. Yeah. Yeah. But I... I, I oh, did, you, did you know that he was suffering with depression or dark thoughts or, you know, insecurities or... I, I Absolutely. I think... Was, was it from the training and the bodybuilding or I, from a mix of things? I, I think it was a mix of everything. But of course, the when you are really young, like mm. we were, 20, 21, and you start every single time comparing with yourself with other people. Absolutely. I think comparison is one of the most dangerous things for young people. Exactly. I, I definitely think that um, like having access to things like social media and in the internet definitely really yeah. does create a lot more problems than what it, it, it solves when it comes to young people. And, uh, and having a lot of self-confidence of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Distortion of your body. Absolutely. You need to be really strong to, to go... Mm -hmm. to be to, able to move to, past that, to and, that and, yeah. yeah and to actually not let the intrusive thoughts win as well like me being having an eating disorder from when I was quite young as well and that was before social media was around and you know having <laughs> thoughts of suicide myself because I was kind of in recovery of having anorexia and watching my body put weight on and feeling like I was so weak for 
eating and being so angry with myself and also having body dysmorphia, looking in the mirror and seeing a different person almost every single time I saw a reflection. So I know that it is such an incredibly hard experience for young people to go through and it's incredibly sad that some people don't make it through that yeah in this instance like your friend yeah and when you are on stage people don't talk about this like you they talk about you gain muscle you lose muscle mm. you do bulking you have water retention but they don't talk how this affect to your brain Brain, yeah the chemical imbalance in your brain emotionally that's crazy i mm-hmm. think it's the worst they 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 fuck your brain because you look like a superhuman yeah but when you stop doing taking that yeah you can still doing everything perfect the diet perfect the training perfect you are not gonna look the yeah. same it's yeah. impossible okay mm-hmm. and that's why there's a lot of people nowadays who is really sad too yeah are doing blast and cruise which yeah. is not not stopping taking steroids mm-hmm. because now there's the idea of okay uh because I don't want to lose this, I'm mm-hmm. going to have uh, moments of my life taking high doses mm-hmm. and moments of my life doing low, low doses. doses. Yeah. And I feel body, like you become a prisoner almost. You're a prisoner of this substance that you're taking. Listen, it's almost like a drug listen, addict. No, you are a junkie. Yeah, you're it's a drug like addict. Yeah. You are addicted to take drugs. Mm-hmm. Drugs, honestly, drugs don't, don't exist. Exist drug addicts yeah. who are people who are addicted to, a, to take something. Yeah. You know? And I think as well, what we don't, rem- we need to remember, what we don't understand is the fact that, that in any case of mental health or mental disturbance or, or psy- you know, psychosis, it is generally a um, chemical imbalance in our brain that causes people to have, you know, m- a myriad of psycho- psychological problems. When you're taking drugs, it is a chemical. And when that chemical is causing an imbalance in your brain, it is the same thing as having an actual psychological problem so yeah. you've got a chemical in your brain yeah. you're taking a drug it's causing your your body and your brain to react differently to what it normally would function like so it's more or less when you're coming down off drugs or steroids or whatever exactly it causes a, a, a very bad imbalance exactly yeah, yeah yeah and people don't talk about that enough no i don't think n- nowadays it's like everyone is taking yeah it's great but i mean everyone a lot of people are also like again on the other hand taking prescription drugs and taking um, illicit drugs yeah. and their body becomes so reliant on them when they take, when they stop taking them, they go through depression, suicide, psychosis, all sorts of things. I think that, you know, it is so incredibly dangerous that we take things not thinking of the worst case scenario because you've heard so many people do it like lightly, but then one one wrong thing or one wrong dose or one badly made drug, whether it's yeah. a steroid or an ecstasy tablet or whatever, can literally render you either brain dead or dead. It's just so, so life is so fragile. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes me also be more a part of bodybuilding mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah. Still training, of course. I always love gym. Mm. Gym is the best. Yeah. Gym is the best sport to recommend to everyone. Mm-hmm. It, it, because it's not competitive. You're only competing with yourself. No, if no, you're, no. In, uh, going to the gym, doing hypertrophy is the best for everyone because yeah. you are making your, your muscles strong. And also your, your mind, strong. though. Exactly. It's, it's really it's, good meditation. Really good. And, and you are making your body better to against any uh, bad injury or mm-hmm. when you tear sick or everything, you are going to be uh, more prepared. Absolutely. So going to the gym is really good. So I was going, still going to the gym, training, looking good, but not op- obsessed. Yeah. And I studied my degree of uh, sports. Mm-hmm. So I I was 21 at that moment, uh, being normal. I, I, I still was working in the nightlife, but I started to think mm, maybe I'm going to quit mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. Because you can only work in that kind of industry for so long before it becomes no longer fun. Like you've got blasting music, people all around you, crowded spaces. I wish, yeah, Do you ever I, think like, yeah. oh, I just want to have a quiet Saturday I, night at home? Yeah, I yeah, I was enjoying that, but I started to not like the nightlife. Yeah. But one day I, I didn't have Instagram at that moment because I had, well, yeah, I had Instagram, but didn't use it. Yeah. I was sitting where I was competing and everything, but I stopped. I wasn't really posting much. So, but in Facebook, I I received a message, uh, one of the photos I applied. Mm-hmm. Uh, Someone threw like, it. Someone like me, some thirsty person slid into your DMs. Was, was a, a, a compliment of my tattoos. Mm-hmm. And I checked, I was Rosario. Ah, All okay. Right? I know this story. 
Now I know where we're going. So one guy called Rosario complained about my tattoos and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I, I say thank you. <laughs> and in New Year's, in, in from 2016 to 2017, mm -hmm. I received a message uh, wishing me Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, thank you so much. Blah, blah. And he, he introduced himself like a manager of a really important DJ. Mm -hmm of Ibiza mm -hmm. and well from Ibiza a really important DJ who played in Ibiza on summer a very think? big worldwide international DJ yeah but plays on summer season in Ibiza yeah just for the record guys so he wished me happy new year and he said to me eh, listen I I follow you mm -hmm. and I the manager of David Guetta okay yeah <laughs> We're going to say the name now. Yeah. We weren't going to tell you, but now we will. Let me get that. And I want you to work with us the next summer here in Ibiza. And at that moment, I, did, I didn't pay any much attention. Like, Did you think it was a hoax or do you think it was real or we were not really I interested? I think it was fake. Yeah. I mean, how many times do we get the the scammers? Like, I'm from Nigeria. You've inherited $1 billion emails and we just... <coughs> yeah. yeah. But so... Um, But he told me, yes, I'm coming from Madrid in February. Let's have a dinner. And I show to you what is my plan. If you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if not, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So February arrived. <laughs> and, and tell me, how was the dinner? How was the plan? One car arrived to my home, to pick me up <laughs> and bring me to the restaurant. Right. Which was fucking crazy. Yeah. So you've never lived like something like this before. Like yeah. no one's, this is like a little pretty woman moment where they send the limo to your house and totally. you're like, what the hell's going on? And I arrived to a really, 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 really expensive restaurant in Madrid. Yeah. Kabuki. <clears throat> It's a Japanese restaurant. Okay. We love Japanese. And this guy, really tall, really <laughs> charismatic. Was he by himself or was he with David Guetta? No, it was oh, Okay, right. Okay. Arrived and he said, hi, I'm Rosario. Uh, and we have a really, really good dinner. He is, uh, and he said to me, listen, I'm the manager of this person. Mm -hmm. I was following you and I think you are, your, I like your image to be mm -hmm. the, the brand like ambassador the of. Yeah, like the face of the yeah. summer posters, yeah, um, yeah. you know, PR, advertising. You need to come, you need to come on summer to Ibiza, mm -hmm. spend the summer here, but you, you also come back, come, will come with us to different places in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're gonna be also in the parish in, in Ibiza uh, mm -hmm. dancing because I saw you're a go-go dancer. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. okay. Sounds like a fucking plan. So I accept and on May I moved to Ibiza and- Where were you living when you moved here? I was living in Bot Marina Botafog. Okay. All right. Um, in the same, almost the same place. Really? Yeah. So you've been there all this time. So this yeah. is something I don't know, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I arrived there and everything was crazy, honestly. I don't know how to explain. In the beginning, everything was unreal. Mm -hmm. Like like amazing new life, like wow, like like luxury. Traveling in jet planes, yeah. dancing in apparently the best parties in the world. Uh -huh. So I actually, my first time coming to Ibiza was 2014 and I came 2015, 2016. I did all those years and Ibiza was so <coughs> different to what it is now. Like it was incredible. Like I yeah. feel like, I mean, that time of, and you were younger than me as well. So that time would have been so electric to be here and just the energy of the island and all the people. Mm, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. I, uh, we are going to go to what happened to my mental yeah with me at that moment but i really need to say mm. ibiza changed, changed so, much so much from i mean my first season was in 2017 and i can it, the, it's crazy change from that yeah. moment to now yeah. i can't imagine how change from 2010 yeah. or, or 2000 absolutely like it's crazy but yeah i was living like a really uh a glamorous life of mm -hmm. Ah, a really famous person. But also, also a life of excess as well, because it's late nights. It's, exactly. It's, exactly. Yeah, it's late nights. It's early, like staying out till early morning. It's on your yeah. feet all night. It's absorbing a lot of people's energy. Yeah, and, and I start to post on Instagram and I start to have a lot of followings mm -hmm. and everything because I was always in like the best things. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> you, I, I, I am in a short period of time, I realized all that things, it's fake. Yeah. It's fake. Like 
<clears throat> so really ex- very similar to what I was living when I was living in LA. Like private jets, going to and events, the, celebrities, exactly. and, and the, then you just go, what the is this shit? Everything is glamorous, everything yeah. is wow. Yeah. But you start to realize all the people are in these places. Not all, but almost it's fake. Yeah. I, I start to realize the VIP table with all these fake people yeah. spending a lot of money. Mm. I really didn't didn't be there for the atmosphere or anything just to show how yeah. they are. Uh, gotcha. Knowing all these people, I was thinking before I met, oh my God, they are my someone I would love to follow and yeah. when they I when I met you, you in meet person them in real life. I really oh my god they are fucking shit yeah or like you see for instance like someone that looks like they've got their life together and then you see them when they're out and they're partying and they're just either fucked up on <coughs> drugs or they're yeah. alcoholic or they're you know what I mean yeah, like yeah but all the famous people are acting like really an assholes and yeah nah, I, and it's, it really tur- it puts a sour taste in your mouth of that lifestyle yeah so i i arrived to a, a moment like i said oh my god i really need to leave this stress situation mm-hmm. which i was learning a lot and having fun but also so you lose yourself a little bit yeah, yeah. totally and yeah. realizing this is not what i want to me no. and i was 23 at that moment and i'm really happy that happened to me with that age because i i I learned so fast what I really don't want yeah. to end in my life. Uh-huh. But to arrive to that thinking, I was having a lot of problems in my brain, yeah. having for the first time an unhealthy lifestyle, which mm-hmm. I never had in my yeah. life. And that year was crazy. Right. So. <clears throat> Do you think, okay, just a quick question. And I, I, I will tell you my opinion on this. I think that if I didn't live my life to such an excess of having the nightclubs, the private <coughs> jets, the VIP <coughs> parties, the celebrities, every second day or every day or every night for two years I was living in LA, I would have probably appreciated the times on and the times off. But when you literally have a hundred percent just tunnel vision of that's all your life is. There's no regular normal night sitting on the couch having a home cooked meal. It's limo to a restaurant, limo to a club, yeah. a Lushy, private booth, Lushy. then a plane somewhere. Yeah. It's literally there's no days off of this life and it literally becomes your whole world. And then before you know it, it's like I'm living the most inauthentic version of myself. Like totally. I'm a small town girl and I want to hang out with my small town friends. But no, no, you've got to go and entertain these people now and you've yeah. got to go and see uh, meet this person. And I, I start to have fake friends yeah. who really don't want didn't want it to be with me just because no. but it's like safety moment, in I was numbers. trying to get in yeah. the island. Yeah. Also I losing the value of the thing, losing the value of the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not enjoying anything because for me everything was easy Mm -hmm. so and also not really having any real relationships that are based outside of that fake world like what else have you guys got to talk about nothing like what's oh the last club and the next party that's all you've got to discuss so when when finished the season uh, i i had the opportunity to come back the next season and also that year after finish the season in ibiza i still need to work with the brand going to other places Mm -hmm. in 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 the world and other I, countries and other I events said, oh my god i didn't want that yeah. i want to finish my degree the last two years and be a normal person mm-hmm. or or at at least not be like this mm-hmm. so i quit i removed my instagram mm-hmm. i finished my studies deleted your instagram not yeah. even deactivated actually deleted i deleted and yeah. created another one like really brand random new. and new and that says a lot for the current the mental state that you're in at the time because like you went bang new person Listen, old person that, is dead instagram uh, is deactivated at that moment i, wa- I had 100k followers more more uh, yeah big one I, have. I think and, i got hacked at 140,000. And, 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 and at that at that moment yeah. in 2017 having 100k followers was a lot Listen, was crazy yeah Okay, but I, I I I don't care. But again, what kind of followers were they? They were people that were obsessed with nightlife they and nightclubs. Because, the, because they I followed because all because they were gay followers. A, 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 no, 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 not no. from not from like the podium de- go go stuff. I I will not have these people. Okay. Uh, the people I, I had were people who just follow me because the glamorous uh, right. life. People that were following this lifestyle because they <coughs> themselves also have a fake life and they you know exactly, people exactly. thrive off that. And I the, see those people now and go ugh. Totally horrible. Share something real, please. And I was turning a little bit like this yeah. and acting like an asshole sometimes. And But um, at the end, I'm a person who can check when I'm turning an asshole. Fine. So I stopped that. 
eh, actitud. Uh -huh. eh, and and when I'm, this is not me, I don't want to be this person. Yeah, and so I come back to Madrid, uh -huh. finish my degree, and when I finish, I said, okay, I want to put myself in a challenge. I want to put myself in, to put my feet in the floor. Uh -huh. I, I'm going to move to London. Right. And I'm going to leave the experience to from start to, to, to zero from with nothing mm -hmm. and make myself more stronger and mm -hmm. be a normal person. So, so put yourself in a position where you don't know anyone. You got to start from the ground up, rebuild yourself, rebuild absolutely. your reputation. And that moment was one of the main moments of my life. Mm -hmm. I remembered my, my moment living in London of, of one of the moments I must learn with uh, one of the moments I have really hard moment, but also really fun moments, really mom uh, uh, moments of my life. I had a lot of lessons. Mm -hmm. so, Do you think that if you didn't move there with the girlfriend that you were with at the time and you did it on your own, the experience would have been different and absolutely. you would have had more? Because I know when I moved to LA, I did it on my own. I didn't have a person that moved with me. I did it by myself. And I think like – being at the position in that mental state that you were in, I relate to it so much because that was me as well when I moved to LA. Yeah. And then what made me move from LA back to Sydney was the exact situation that we had with Ibiza. Like, I can't live this life. These people are so fake. I think that having those realizations on your own and not having anyone to support you is so important because it shows you just exactly what you're made of. Yeah. Like what you can, what you're capable of and how yeah. resilient you can be. <clears throat> so in London, I was working in Azara. Mm -hmm. We love Sarah. Yeah, and I I really cr create a big group of friends there. Uh, I had so much fun there. I was working in a really good area of London, in Squ London Square. It's like Chelsea. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Chelsea, the neighborhood Chelsea. So I was really good there. And then um, I started to work there as personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And was my first experience being personal trainer in London. So one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, not just online really coaching. Good, yeah. Honestly, I, I learned so much in London. And you learned pretty much how to speak English while you were living in London too, didn't you? Because you didn't really have the full. I, wa I was thinking experience. before going to London. I I talk good like English. now, yeah. right? okay. And when I arrived there, I was thinking, oh my god, I don't know how how to, to talk speak in to English. These people. I don't understand no one. And but again, you got to remember, British people speak really fast, like I do. We have our own kind of accent in yeah, our language. I can, I can understand to you one hundred percent of everything every day you with talk. Me. <laughs> yeah, no, but I don't. I arrived there thinking I don't know how to talk in English, and I also learned to learn a language. I don't know another part, but, but English. You, you learn another language when you are in a stressful situation. You just yeah. have to. You have to adapt. Yeah. You have no yeah. other choice. Exactly. It's so, eat or be eaten in yeah. that kind of um, environment, isn't it? So, yeah, of course I had my com my ups and downs at that moment, but I remember that really, really good. Yeah. And I didn't miss anything. Because you felt like you're on your own. No one knows me here. I can literally start from scratch. I'm yeah. literally a brand new baby just being born into London. Yeah. I'm who I want to be. I can say who yeah. I am and, and be that person. And no one knows me from my previous life. Crazy. No one it's knows great, anything. Right? In yes, that's crazy because I remember I was working in Zara being like uh, one more from the group. Yeah. And thinking like... I Six months ago, I was in jet planes and Yeah, but the thing everything. is, in the jet planes with who? Like, exactly. I feel like when I was living that lifestyle as well, I was like, exactly. I was just a pretty face on a hot body and no one gave a fuck what There's I thought. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. Right. No one cared what I thought or what I had to say or what my opinion yeah. was. It was like, shut up and look pretty. Exactly. And, and work. I was working, um, you know, at Wet Republic and all these nightclubs and stuff like that. And it was like, no one gives a fuck if you're a smart no, girl. They just no. care if you're hot. And it was a really lonely lifestyle. So I know exactly what you felt like when yeah. you had to leave that. Yeah. So the thing is the COVID arrived and I need to come back to Madrid. And I come back for after four years, four years almost, mm -hmm. not living in my, with my father or my mother or mm -hmm. anything. So you'd been out on your own for four years and you had to move back in with your dad. With my dad. We, I, I know his dad really well. I really love his dad and I love the house that they live in. I know it very well. Yeah. Um, and it was so cute. Like I, you're going to tell the story, but it's so cute. You guys reconnected over COVID. Yeah. I, I know for a lot of people, the COVID, the lockdown situation was really stressful and Absolutely. really bad. And I understand. And very lonely for many people and, yeah, and um, very scary for a lot of people who, were, exactly. who got sick and lost loved ones as, as and well. And the jobs and everything. Absolutely. Losing money. Yeah. But for me, it was amazing because, um, we, we were just me and my father at the moment because my sister was 
Uh, he uh, stayed in London because my sister was living in London yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Maria. Hi, Maria. Alone by the, by herself, not mm -hmm. with me, but alone. Mm -hmm. And the partner of my father mm -hmm. wouldn't be with my father at that moment because because the COVID. Mm -hmm. The the father of the uh, Laura mm -hmm. died, so he needed to go of COVID. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so fucking he, sad. So he needed to go to. He, her hometown to stay mm -hmm. there because the lockdown and he, yeah. he couldn't come back to Madrid. Mm -hmm. So it was just you and your dad? Me and my dad in the lockdown. Jorge Senior. And from Monday to, shat to Saturday, I was doing a really, really, really good routine. Mm -hmm. Having my meals, eating really heal health, uh, uh, filming uh, every, every day a new training in my room mm -hmm. with uh, stuff like Chairs, yeah. tables. <laughs> I've seen them. Uh, yeah. I have seen them. You had the chin up bar in the yeah. doorway and all yeah. that stuff, didn't you? Not, not any weight or anything no that's crazy yeah okay but the thing is you you were very resourceful Re if anyone's ever seen the show macgyver have you seen macgyver it's a guy that can literally make like a bomb out of a matchstick and a piece of chewing gum you are the macgyver of the home workouts during I'm, covid I'm, i maintain myself really good and that moment <laughs> i earn a, a lot of clients at personal training in the moment of my life i i had most clients mm -hmm. And on Sundays, my father and me, we cook every Sunday a new different cheat meal. It was one, burgers one a lot. Sunday were the new famous burgers from the home. They would make, hand yeah. make and draw and illustrate yeah. their own menus. But the menus were written in English, by the way, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, my father is like this. He likes That's draw. really cute. Yeah. And they would illustrate the picture of the burger and explain what it is like succulent beef patty, bacon, yeah. sizzling bacon, <laughs> spicy barbecue sauce. Yeah. <laughs> really uh, cute. Another, another night, the, the Sunday. Mexico yeah, night yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mexican fiesta yeah <laughs> really good so that's that actually lockdown, really cute I'm sorry but for me it was a really really good moment in my yeah. life too and when we finished the lockdown I had a really good base of clients yeah. a personal trainer and I said okay what am I, I going to do next I have an option to stay here in Madrid mm -hmm. and be a personal trainer here or Trying to, again, get out of my comfort zone and put myself in another mm. situation. And what was the other situation you put yourself in? Going back to Ibiza. I don't know why you did that. <laughs> You'd be a totally different person. You know what I mean? You did all that that soul searching to leave Ibiza because you said you didn't like the fake lifestyle. Yeah. And you made a beeline straight back here. Because I feel like the, the fake night life of Ibiza. But I really enjoy the island. You, yeah, because uh, let's get one thing straight. Ibiza is a really beautiful place to live. The <coughs> only downside of it is, is that it's because it's a tourist destination, it is new people coming in every day, every week, yeah. so to speak. And the people that are the locals that live here and work here, literally you guys are working like working your asses off for those six months of the year. Yeah. Because I'm, that's it's a seasonal place. And and summer was arriving, I was thought, okay, I'm not gonna stay here in Madrid with everything is closed and there's not there's it's no light. It's so hot and you can't do anything. Yeah, I, I prefer to be in, in Ibiza, which is still COVID restrictions, mm. but it's gonna be something and people with money are gonna arrive there and maybe I gonna I can have really good clients. Mm -hmm. So I moved here in 2021 again. And at that at that moment I, I have contact here from my previous mm -hmm. uh, in 2017 yeah. being here. Yeah. And also I contact again Rosario, which at that moment was the manager of the Vigeta. And in 2021, uh, he had a real estate of villas and everything. Mm -hmm. So my idea when I arrived here was being personal trainings, but I find <laughs> the, a new concept of job. Yeah, which is? Concierge. The VIP concierge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is what brought my attention to him when I first met him. So yeah. at that moment, the uh, one was still in uh, COVID restrictions, like mm -hmm. I said. But, but there were, was still for the people the, that could travel, were, still coming here. Were like a lot of private parties, a yeah. lot of people with money who wanted to rent villas at that moment, yeah. a lot, mm -hmm. because the clubs were closed, the parties were in the villas. Okay. Uh, people who wanted to book restaurants and everything. So I start to So move. you went back straight back into the nightlife scene again? No. But you were hanging out at parties and going to private parties and going to parties and all that kind of stuff? No, not much. No? No, I was... So we were doing personal moving, training? Moving the people to that things. But the, the only thing I was doing, like, on share was renting villas. Right. But, what, I was so what, the but on weekends and stuff, you were at the parties? No. No? No. What were you doing? 
Nothing. Just chilling. Yes. Honestly, <laughs> I, I had believe. my friend, my friends, were, my friends coming. Yeah. You know, I'm not a party person. Yeah, okay. I, I like the techno vibe and the DJ. He likes the techno music. Yeah. But at that moment, we're, we're in Paris of DJs. Just in August, he started to open a few things. And I went, of course, to watch Black Coffee. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah. But yeah, I... I start honestly, it's true when I when you are hanging, I have to lose a little bit my mind again. Yeah. I feel like of of on find it easy money, not working yeah. much. And you lose the value of working hard. It's, I, I I hate to say it, but it doesn't matter how strong your morality and your willpower is, you unknowingly will start to become like the people that you spend time with. Yeah. You unreal you unwillingly and unknowingly start to talk the way they talk and discuss yeah. the things they discuss and and see things from their perspective because you're spending so much time with them. And before you know it, because you're such an easily adaptable person and you're such a friendly person that you realize, oh, hang on a shit, hang on a moment. Like I'm hanging out with people that I don't really agree with their opinions, but because we're all having a good time, I'm going to go, go yeah. along with the flow. And before you know it, you're like, hang on a second, I'm with people I don't really like. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm going, I'd am i like you to be honest. I, I lose <laughs> a little bit my yeah. goal again, my path. Yeah. I was really focused and it's true. Maybe I need, I, I choose the wrong decision coming back here again. I don't think it was the wrong decision because I think as well, you at least you've learned the value. Like the thing is you could go through the same mistake how many times, but as, as long as you learn the lesson and the important thing is two times, twice, once bitten, twice shy, as they say, you came back around, you gave it another shot, you still realize that necessarily the party lifestyle and the people weren't for you. But the thing is, you weren't afraid of giving it another go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you saw a potential opportunity there. Yeah. And you want to make money and better yourself. Yeah. And working less and having less stress <laughs> and everything. Working less. Yeah. Because it's be... always good to go and eat a dinner in a nice restaurant, especially when you're not the one paying for it, right? Wow. Yeah. It's totally well. well and the thing is, it's like me. at the same time, I would rather eat crumbs with bums than steaks with snakes, as they say. Yeah. But, so, I, but we are going to arrive to a really critical moment of my life. Crit critical moment. Critical moment, yeah. yeah. 2022, mm -hmm. I was living this lifestyle really easy, mm -hmm. really fun, really no problems in my life, nothing. But you appear in my life, mm -hmm. and I have a, the biggest breakdown, break mind. No, <laughs> how you call? <laughs> what are you trying to say, baby? I have. A you breakdown, had a yeah. you had not a breakdown. Meltdown. No, was it a meltdown? What is a meltdown? I don't think it was a meltdown. I think you had a moment where you kind of had a fork in the road where you could have said, listen, I can continue doing something that's easy and that is having transactional relationships with people that aren't my real friends and coasting through life, living, barely skimming the surface and just being really easy or take a take a, an option that's a bit more difficult and that would be to embark on a long-distance relationship with this girl. No. No, is that what you're not saying? Well, because I totally fall in love to you. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is exactly what I'm saying. And but just not in the words he understands. And I, I didn't have anything to give to you. No, baby, but the I, thing I is... Was, I was losing my life just doing... Yeah. A, a fun and easy stuff. But the thing is, it's easy to do that and kill time. Like, as if you don't want to be crying, like, you know, I know I'm not happy with my life right now, but at least I'm out having fun Not while, while I'm not being happy with my life. You're not going to sit at home and be miserable. Yeah. So the thing is, then when we met, it was like you were sitting at home missing me when I was back home in Australia and you could still go out and have parties and stuff. But then you realize going out to those parties, it's like, ugh, you know these people you. suck. Yeah. But I think I went through the same thing because I, I know exactly what you're trying to say. And this is why I work so good as your translator. It's like for a year and a half, I was living in Sydney before I'd met you as well. And I was out every weekend with my friends. Someone yeah, sends me an invite, I'll jump in an Uber. The second that you and I started dating, someone would send me an invitation to go out for somewhere on the weekend and I'd be like, it's not worth the $20 Uber or it's not worth going and sitting at the dinner and drinking four or five drinks, having the hangover the next day and feeling like shit or not or missing the gym. I think it put both of our lives into perspective a lot once we met each other because yeah. it was like, I can coast still treading water in the same spot I was last year and the year before, or I can swim in my own direction on my own. It's going to be a lot harder but at least I know I'm going somewhere as opposed to the people treading water, having fun in the same nightclub every three, four weekends in a row. I'd rather be on my own knowing I'm going in a direction that's going to yeah. get me somewhere in the long term, even if it's swimming against the current. But also another thing was happening, like I was always li living 
really easy with no caring about any problem. I think I always were people who was really open to help me. But the, when, 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 but when what I happens met, when that help dries up? What happens when the party people that pay for the dinners and pay for the table and get the drinks and no, organize the holidays when eventually they've all moved on and you're left kind of still, you know what I, I mean? What happened when you want to be that person with you? Like I wanted, like I wanted to give you everything. Yeah. I, I wasn't ready. And I had in my brain, like choose the, the, the easy and stupid life mm -hmm. and not work on this beautiful girl who happened in my life. And she gonna teach me how, what I is had important. To push you. <laughs> I had to push you, didn't I? A little bit, or baby, to realize that. Work hard, be an adult, be a man mm -hmm. and start to create your, Own your future. everything for the first time, yeah. finally, mm -hmm. with this person. Yeah. And it was really hard. Of course. Because I was sure love to you. But it's super scary as well because, like I said, when you start hanging around with certain people or you're in a certain lifestyle or you're in a group of people and you're going to do what everyone else is doing because it's easy and it, you've got, like, safety in numbers and you're never really alone even though you're probably lonely, but you're always in the group of people that are doing the same thing. So it's like you can either go with the flow – of yeah. what everyone else is doing, or you can swim against the current on your own and it's going to be a lot harder. And I think it shows real bravery to go like, you know what, I'm going to take this this decision when you met me and you thought I'm going to have a long distance relationship with her. I'm going to really have to go out on my own, I want, start I want making my to, own to money. With me, uh, to be one, yeah. to create something. So, so but I mean, now. none of this even would have happened at all if we didn't like both of us believe in us. Can you not please me? Um, if we both didn't believe in it, it would never have happened, you know? Yeah. So I think we both it was a it was a group effort, you know? And um, yeah, at the end we've end here. Mm. And I quit all that stuff. And like I said, I, right now I'm doing all like coaching. Just honestly for living because not gonna lie, I don't want to continue this for a long time. I I, of course, I would love to have people, but just people who are like me. People that are dedicated. But not, <clears throat> not just doing personal training to, oh, I'm going to have as more clients I, I can. Mm. To, no, no, no. Just, Some people will bring on 50, 60 clients and just give them the same copy and paste program. Yeah, and, but yeah. I want to create all the goals we are, you and me doing together and growing our brand and yeah. be, be with you. And i really happy for all this stuff you were teaching me this year. And I apologize also for maybe put sometimes you in a really stressful situation. I put you this last year. I think I grow, ma I grow up You've a lot. grown up a lot, yeah. Yeah, and... I think you have... I think I've also been a little bit hard on you though because I remember like I, when I was 29... I was a different person. Like I'm not who I was now. Like I was still going out partying and doing the same things that you were doing. Everything was really easy. You know what I mean? I, you know, live, I, I worked to live and, you know, got by with what I needed and, and just had the best time ever. And I think that when something really important ha comes your way that you have to make a decision, am I going to chase what I want or am I going to settle for what's easy? And you, you know, you had to step up. Yeah. I think we are really good for both. Absolutely. Each other. But I think like, I think the lesson to be learned in all of this as well, though, it's like, I'm sure everyone out there that's watching this right now, you've been, I've had so many opportunities where there's a fork in the road and I could choose something really scary or to stay where it's easy. And I've chosen where it's easy so many times. And I knew myself, fuck, I should have taken that opportunity. When it came to us, it was like, I know if, if, if I don't take that opportunity, I'm going to yeah, regret it forever. Exactly. So sometimes you just got to get the balls. Yeah. Your metaphorical lady balls, ladies, if you're watching and men, your balls and just go, I'm not going to let a good thing pass me by because it's going to lead you to the best possible version of yourself, which is us right now doing this podcast, talking to all you guys at home. And all the goals we have. And all the goals that we have. And it's like. Trying to stay motivated and stay on the straight and narrow in that process. You've got to go against every single thing that you've learned from, you know, teenage years until your adult life. You've got to actually go, normally my habit would be to run when it gets hard. Yeah. I have to fight against it. Like a person trying to give up drugs or smoking, you've got to fight against the temptation to, to do the easy thing. Yeah. Says me who's just drinking two glasses of wine and I just went and bought a vape because I was dying for it. <laughs> but sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to do the hard thing and you've got to give up 
things yeah. that aren't good for you and, yeah, follow what is right. Yeah. So I'm very proud of you. Thank you, baby. And this was a very intimate discussion. I think, like, do you feel lighter? Absolutely. Having had this conversation? Yeah. You've got all this off your chest? Yeah. Now, in saying that, this is now the favourite time of the evening. Which one? Spanglish. 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 <laughs> so, right. this is going to be a lot more fun because I've had two glasses of red wine. Yeah. But I just fucking needed one, you know? It's almost the end of the year. I got really excited about tonight's events and tonight's episode that I just had to have a glass of red wine that turned into two glasses of red wine. Today I start. You're going to start. I've yeah. got so many words for you. But All right. go. Hi, guys. We are in Spanglish. And today <laughs> we are going to teach Kiki the days of the week. Yay. I know a because few already. she's almost two years with me and she don't know the days of the week. I know something. So but here I just we have... Them. The days of the week uh -huh. and the days of in Spanish and in English. And you need to choose okay, which one are. All right. Okay. So, so let me, can I start? Can I read it? Yeah. Miracles. Yeah. And I know this one only because I know the translation of it because we watched the show <laughs> on Netflix. Yeah. Miracles is Wednesday. Very and good. If anyone watched the Netflix series Wednesday, that's what it's called in, yeah. sp in Spanish. Okay. We have Wednesday. Okay. Now. Lunes. Lunes. That is Monday. Wow. I know that because most places here are open from Lunes to Sabado. <laughs> Sabado. Sabado. Sabado, yeah. yeah. So, Sabado, which one is? Sabado is Saturday. Whoa. Vien Viernes? Viernes. Viernes, Viernes yeah. is... Let's go. Fuck. It's Viernes night. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. It goes last Friday night, by the yeah, way. Exactly. Last really Friday good. night. All right. We have Miercoli, we have Luni, we have Viernes. I've done Sabado. Sabado. Uh, Martes is Tuesday. Very good. Fuck yeah. All right. Jueves. Jueves is... Thursday. Very good. Because I know Domingo is Sunday. Yeah. So, okay. Now, no watching it. Tell me the day of the week. Fuck. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monday. Lunes. Tuesday. Fuck. Martes. Yeah. Wednesday. Mercules. Yeah. Jueves. Uh, uy. <laughs> <laughs> jueves. Thursday. Thursday. Jueves. Viernes. Friday. Viernes. Viernes. Saturday. Sab Sabado. Domingo. Sunday. Very good. <laughs> Woo okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Now it's my turn, ladies and gentlemen, all of my Australian friends or anyone that's been and traveled to Australia, you'll be very familiar with some, if not all of these words. All right. I'm going to ask you, and I'm not going to give you a hint. <sighs> These are some words in Australian that people don't understand. We abbreviate a lot of stuff. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if you can read this. But the first word is devo. What do you think devo means? Def definitely. No? You're close. Devo. 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 Yeah. Like, if I was really sad, I was really... Devastated. Perfect. Yeah. All right. What about servo? Serving. So if you were going to go somewhere and you're going to put... Uh, gasoline in your car, you're going to go to a uh, gasoline station, service station, All right. the servo. So Sharing. if you're going to go and buy, you devo that the pub was closed, but can we stop past the servo and I'll All get right. a packet of fags? All okay. Right. All right. Defo. Definitely. Yes. Perfect. What about a doughy? It's a bar. The no. doughies. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you were in a car and you were trying to be really cool and you do a bunch of circles really quickly we call them donuts or we call them doughies all right doughies all right so if someone was maggot what would they be uh so fucking maggot last night mate i had way too many shots of tequila oh fucked drunk drunk all right all right what if someone said something to you and i well, ask me for something oh no yeah say did you hear okay perfect example did you hear the hawks lost at footy the other day and you'd say, well, that's fucking stiff shit, isn't it? Because I bet for the other team. I didn't understand absolutely nothing of what you'd say right now. If you heard that the Hawks lost the game at footy the other the day. Hawks lost the game. Hawks as a team. Yeah. And I say that's stiff shit then, isn't it, mate? Because I put my money on the other team anyway. Like, like so he, stiff shit devastated. means, yeah, like, yeah. who cares? Stiff shit. All Too right. bad, mate. All right. Buckley's. 
It's like chokers. No, no, no. <laughs> so we've got a saying in Australia, it's called you got Buckley's chance, mate. So if you said like Robbo owes me 20 bucks and I'd say, well, mate, you've got Buckley's if him ever paying you back. Wow. You guys have a really, really, really different language yeah. than the rest of the world. All right. The next three things are all the same thing, but they're in different sizes. We've got a throwy, we've got a long neck and we've got a scooey. What do you think they are? Throwy, long neck and a scooby. Yeah. Wow. Like an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> They're all different sizes of beers. You can oh, have a, wow. A scooey is a schooner. A long neck is a like a 40 ounce of malt, like of what malt liquor looks like in America, but we have it as a beer. We have a long neck. I used to, to right. drink, I could drink four of them back when I was in high school. And a throwy is a small beer. You get them in cases of 24. All right. I would try a throwy. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, if someone asked you for a dart, what were they asking you for? A dart? Yeah. Can I get a dart off you, mate? A lighter while you're at it. What? Can I have a dart? Oh. It's a cigarette. Give me, give me, give me. Give me a dart. Have a hit on this dart. <sighs> All right. Now, if someone said, oh, this is a f absolute piss take. Uh, this um, piss take, like... A really travel situation. No, so someone that's a piss take, meaning like, are you fucking, are you joking, mate? Is this some kind of a piss take? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like if you're travel situation. Well, no, it's like, is, are you fucking joking? Like, come on, there's some kind of piss take, mate. Like, wow. you're sitting in my seat. I went to just went to the bathroom and I come back out of the pub. Some guy sitting in your seat, you're like, mate, are you, have, are you taking the piss? Is this a piss take? Therefore, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that is. Tonight's episode of Spanglish. Really good. Oh my God, these words are really yeah. difficult to You learn. need to learn these before we go to Australia in two weeks. All right. Yeah. Very good. But anyway, guys, that's tonight's episode. I hope you've really enjoyed getting to know Jorge on a more intimate level yeah. like I know him. Yeah. Next week, we are going to have an special of Christmas. Yeah, we're going to do a Christmas special like we said earlier. It's going to be how to survive, you know, yeah. X, Y, Z scenarios at yeah. Christmas time. We might even make a Christmas cocktail and put it on the Instagram page. And we're just going to talk about, you know, crazy moments at Christmas time. Yeah, stay tuned on our Instagram because we are going to ask you guys a few things and you yeah. need to help us. And yeah. we and the best, the best answer we are going to put in our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Stay tuned, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, please... If you like it, like it and follow us. Like and subscribe. Please. Yeah, and share. And share it, please. Yeah. And thank you so much for watching it. And see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>